All right, good morning. Uh, so this is the last lesson uh, for Physics 12. Uh, it's also an optional lesson. I'm not going to test on it. Uh, it's just if you're interested in what momentum is. Um, so it's a very brief kind of looking into momentum. Um, so let's start off, what is momentum? Uh, momentum is kind of like a speed and a mass attached together. Uh, it, it's kind of, you can think of it as a weighted speed, okay? Um, so an example is a heavier truck going the same speed as a car will have more momentum. So it'll have the same speed, but the truck, since it has a more weighted speed, it has more momentum, okay? Uh, you can think of it kind of as rugby players running along. Um, if you have two running at the same speed, but one is heavier, um, it'll be harder to stop the heavier one because they have more momentum. So what symbols do they use? They use P for momentum, mass uh, times velocity. So the units you could guess would be kilograms for mass and meters per second for velocity. So momentum is in kilogram meters per second or a weighted speed. Um, and that brings us to the word impulse. What is impulse? You kind of um, think of it as like a brief like kind of force, impulse. Um, but really what is impulse? Impulse is just the change in momentum. Okay, it's how your momentum can get changed or it's kind of this force of momentum being applied for a certain amount of time. Um, so it's the change in momentum. And here's an example of a rugby player that has 60 kilograms mass running at two meters per second. If they get tackled, they feel an impulse. Say they go from that two meters per second to zero. Um, that means they have to feel an impulse of 120 kilogram meters per second um, over a certain amount of time, usually a very small amount of time because they usually are running and then they get stopped almost instantly. Uh, so their momentum went from 120 kilogram meters per second to zero kilogram meters per second because they're not going any uh, speed at that point. Um, so. Uh, this theorem here kind of comes from Newton's second law, which is F equals ma. And then if you rearrange it, acceleration is just the change of velocity over the change in time. And, re and you can rearrange it so that it's F delta t is equal to m delta v. Okay. Um, here we know mv is momentum. So uh, this is kind of equal to the change in p or impulse. is equal to the force applied times a certain number of seconds. Okay, um, So you can see the impulse is shorter if the time is shorter, or the impulse is shorter if the force is shorter. Um, so impulse and momentum are pretty much the same thing, but momentum is kind of a weighted speed. Impulse is a change in that weighted speed. Um, all right, so now that brings us to one of the most important things to do with momentum. It's called the law of conservation of momentum. Um, it kind of looks similar to our energy one is equal to energy two type of equation. Um, but it's the change in uh, momentum for one object um, can only that change the momentum of a second object by the same amount. Pretty much no momentum is lost in an ideal vacuum. Um, if one object hits the other, the momentum is conserved between the two. So let's see an example to kind of understand this. If a bowling ball is, or I guess the first question, is there a law of conservation of speed? If you think of the law of conservation of momentum, maybe there's a law of conservation of speed. What does that mean? Well, it, really what it's asking is, is if there's a five kilogram bowling ball, traveling at five meters per second, and it hits a 20 kilogram still barrel. So let's see if I can draw a really bad barrel here. So I got my barrel. So this ball hits the heavier barrel. Uh, the question says, will the barrel then be going five meters per second when the ball hits it? So we all know that won't happen because it weighs more. Right? It'll, it'll cause us to roll, but not quite as fast as 5 meters per second. So th there's not a conservation of speed. There's no law of conservation of speed because that doesn't happen. Um, 
when we take into consideration momentum, we would figure out that the barrel would then be going 1.25 meters per second. Um, and the reason because this is the momentum of the bowling ball momentum of the bowling ball is just equal to uh, mass times the speed of it so it's going to be times mass times speed which is just going to be 5 kilograms times 5 meters per second is 25 kilogram meters per second okay um, with the law of conservation of momentum it means that s momentum that's in this bowling ball will get transferred to this barrel and uh, the barrel will contain the same amount of momentum afterwards so the momentum of the barrel must then be 25 um, and momentum for the barrel is mass times velocity but our mass of our barrel is 20 kilograms not 5 so you can solve for V just by going 25 divided by 20 and you'd end up getting 1.25 meters per second. That's because momentum is observed to be conserved uh, in the real world. Again, uh, that's not including friction losses. All right, so there are practice questions. Um, last of all, is there a law of conservation of momentum? Um, that's just, I guess, what I went over. Yes, momentum in the bowling ball was 25 kilogram meters per second. And at the end, the barrel had that same momentum value. Had a different speed, but had the same momentum value. Um, so I kind of already answered that. It would be 1.25 meters per second. All right. And then down here, I said, this is a very important law. As, uh, you can see how bodies interact with one another. Uh, our kinematics that we've seen, we, or our forces that we've seen, we, we haven't really seen how things interact with each other that much. Um, and it turns out scientists use this all the time to see how particles interact when they collide with one another. Um, all right, so I'm going to get rid of this, that little part there. So here we have two cars running into each other. One is 3,000 kilogram truck, one is a 1,000 kilogram car, and here it's saying they hit or they have an impulse in a time of about 20 milliseconds. What is that? That's 0 0.020 seconds. Uh, so they hit for that about that much time. Okay. Uh, so a sample question here is these two cars uh, run into each other both at the same speed. What's the force? What's the change in momentum um, for these two different cars? So how do we kind of understand this? Um, well, first of all, I would just see what the momentum is. Uh, say they're both going 15 meters per second. Um, so momentum is mass times velocity. So momentum, momentum of this truck is negative 3,000 times 15 because it's going left. And I'm going to say negative is left direction, positive is right direction. So my, my momentum is going to be um, negative 45,000 kilogram meters per second and then this car here is the same calculation but different numbers a thousand this time positive times 15 um, so here we have 15 thousand kilogram meters per second positive though okay so you can tell the truck has more momentum it has three times more momentum because it has three times more mass um, and it says so essentially um, we can look at this and we can see um, what are the differences in the momentum or what's the impulse felt of each kind of car. Well, let's see uh, overall the net momentum. And this is kind of seen as we have a vector arrow of momentum and a smaller vector arrow of momentum of the car. If you add them together, you'll see kind of the net momentum that results. So the net momentum is, we'll say this is 1, we'll say this is 2, momentum of 1 plus momentum of 2. Okay, so our momentum of 1 is 15,000, our momentum of 2 is negative 45,000, so we get a negative 30,000 net momentum. So overall you can bet 
that both the cars will end up be going left or this car is going to hit this car and that car is going to this truck is going to stop and that car is going to go left uh, by 30,000 but overall that's our net momentum value um, so that's what we're going to end up on is negative 30,000 okay um, so if they both end up going negative 30,000 they both stick together and they both end up going that way um, you can bet you'd rather be in the truck than the car because um, this truck has more mass but why would you rather be in that um, well let's look at um, kind of our impulse equation we know change in P is our impulse which is uh, F Delta T uh, which is over, which is m delta v. So we have that there in the change in um, momentum and the impulse. Let's just look at different systems. So relative to the truck, let's look at that first. Um, so the change in momentum is going to be your final momentum minus your initial momentum, and my final. Our final momentum is negative 30,000. My in, our initial momentum was uh, negative uh, 45,000. So overall, if we add that together, we get plus 15,000 um, as our impulse or our change in momentum. Okay, when, once it hits that car, which makes sense because 15,000, the car kind of hits the truck. So that's going to be our impulse. Um, on the truck, if we wanted to find a force, we know the change in P is the same as F delta T. So we can go F delta T is equal to 15,000. And uh, if we want to know force, we just go force is equal to 15,000 divided by delta T. Uh, and since our delta T is uh, 20 milliseconds, it's going to be 0 0.020 seconds that it gets applied for. Uh, if you increase that T value, you could tell that the force gets, or the uh, yeah, the force would get kind of softer. Seven hundred and fifty thousand newtons of force. Uh, is what that truck will feel in that car crash. Okay, and you can calculate its acceleration if you divide by its mass, and you'd see that a lot of acceleration is happening to this truck. Okay, to slow it down. Um, and now, if we look at the car, we could do the same thing. The change in P is PF minus PI. Uh, in this case, the momentum final is. Uh, negative 30,000 again, uh, but this time our initial momentum was plus 15,000. So we get a value of negative 45,000 uh, impulse change or momentum change um, in the car. Okay, and if we relate it to this, it's a lot more in the negative direction. Okay, um, so we know our F delta T uh, can be equal to this and we can solve for our F and this will give us 0 0.02 seconds is how quickly it's happening and we get negative 225 ne negative 2 million 250 thousand Newtons of force acting on the car. So you can see that a lot more force is acting on the car due to the truck. And overall, uh, it would feel a lot more acceleration than this one would um, because its mass is less even, too. Okay, so if we were to do acceleration values, we'd have to go at 750,000 divided by 3,000. And that would give you 250 meters per second squared acceleration um, in the truck which is really fast 
and then the force you would apply in the car would be this divided by a thousand, so it would be two thousand two hundred and fifty meters per second squared. All right, so that's kind of momentum um, and impulse. Uh, in a very brief way. I have practice questions that you can try. Uh, if you're interested, just three of them, and the answers will be posted. Thanks.